letters about uh, bringing in uh, Syrian women. You know, how will help the Syrian women. They're so abused and so mistreated and they need to be brought here and, you know, you need to, su need to support one. And, you know, I'm like, no. Don't be sending me that stuff. No. Uh, I see Don about a $4 million increase. In yeah, I don't remember what it was. I think we need to add under nursing home that um, I asked if we were in a verbal agreement that we weren't going to have any penalties from the previous contract signed. And he said yes, we, that we were in agreement that there were to be no Family. penalties. So you want that added? I would like that added. I think it's very important in case something comes back on us about the previous contract because the the idea is that we're going to move forward with him on these other items um, that way we can have something to refer to he did say so.
that done. Is there anything else? Not that I saw. Uh, no. I'll second. Move to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, what about Rhonda's deal? Do you want to move forward with that? Oh, sorry. I had it. Nothing changed, correct? Correct. Could you, um, do you happen to know, oh, here it is, 19, 430, I was looking for that and I couldn't find it. Second. I'll second it. Any discussion? Yes, I'm wondering if this is an appointment. Why is it being handled like this if this is an appointment? I mean, basically, what we're saying by doing this is that anybody who's ever been employed can just come in with a contract for us to sign, and we're going to sign it. No, appraisers are handled totally different by the state. It's not being handled any other way except for us signing this right now. So I'm confused as to, you know, if you were hiring someone to do something, you wouldn't have a protocol, you don't open it up, you don't, you don't um, have any sort of... I think it doesn't the state require us to have a contract with the appraiser? I believe so. But what you're saying is you're you're allowing someone to bring you their own contract and you're signing it. We're not even preparing it ourselves. It's the same one that we used last time. I think it's the I think the county attorney probably when they first started did the contracts and then she just brings in the amended copy which with has the new dates on it. It's our, it's our agreement. She just has it on her computer and she modifies the dates. <clears throat> so we just allow someone to indefinitely re-contract themselves? Or there's no, I mean, I thought if the county is going to sign a contract, we have to open bids to sign contracts. Not for Why? Because you're contracting someone. I'm also confused as to why if we're contracting someone they automatically fall under county employee status. I mean wouldn't you be, that's like if we contracted the same person every year to mow the lawns and then they automatically became a county employee because they contracted with us. Because in the agreement it says that we will provide employee benefits. 
Right, but my confusion is that we opened up bids and signed a contract with someone to mow cemeteries. And I would think that that would be less important, yet we did it that way for mowing grass. But we don't do that for a position that affects the entire county's tax assessments. There has to be, they have to be certified appraisers, for one thing. Mm -hmm. Anybody can't come in mm -hmm. and just bid on it. It's got to be a certified appraiser. But what this agreement is telling me is that we haven't even solicited certi certified people to bid on the position. And I just read in the minutes from our neighboring county that they're sharing an appraiser with someone else. So, so here we are with like a fifth of the amount of population and we're hiring our own individual but there are other counties sharing the, those costs. So I'm just, I'm a little concerned Stroud's about... still doing two counties? Uh, True is... Doing three counties, isn't True is the appraiser in Ottawa County and then the Zuri appraisal consultant for Ottawa, Lincoln, and Rice counties. Okay. He just a sort of consultant in Rice County. Mm -hmm. I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. I'm going to say it reflects poorly on our board to sign something repeatedly without going through protocol, the same as we do when we're soliciting bids for anything. Um, I would guess I would suggest that you look at what they're being paid in other counties look at what we're paying. Look at what the part-time um, contracted people are getting paid versus what we pay a full-time contract. Okay. I, I would be happy to do that. I just think it reflects poorly on us to solicit bids for a $2,000 summer job on cutting grass at, at cemeteries, but not to solicit bids for a full-time position where we offer all of our county benefits. And this looks to me like it's just a repeated deal where nobody knows that it's happening. Someone just walks in the door and says, here you go, you know, sign this for another four years. And I haven't seen it advertised or um, talked about. I guess I, I don't know why you bring someone in who wasn't familiar with the county and the people. And the, she's basically just an employee, but the state requires us to do a contract. I hear what you're saying, and I'm saying if we're going to contract with someone, I think it would be appropriate to do it professionally with an actual solicitation for bids. If this is the person that you want, you vote for them all day long, regardless of getting one bid or ten bids. But our board is responsible to do things legitimately, and I would not call this legitimate. Any other discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion is carried. Situation, so we're on to the next. I'm on. Yes. So, guys, I was here when Lynn and I were here a year ago, requesting gold reports. And when we left, you were going to have Mr. Cassette look at them. We're going to get back to me, and I've never heard anything. He retired, he won't look at them anymore. So, so basically, you've done nothing since we've been here last year. I, I wouldn't say that. I think they did. Do you have any idea how much was spent on each one of those areas in the last year? No, I don't. 
What area are you talking about? Well, you got four places on Union. Oh, you got okay. one on 30th right. by my house. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. We've got them all over the town. They, I understand, but how many of them? The how many ever do months. that with one with one inch of rain? And I got a video to show it with one inch of rain. Would it surprise you to know that you've spent close to three thousand dollars there on one one spot in the last year? Well, they've been gravel four times. One time it lasted four days before it washed down the creek again. You've had backhoes there. You had two regular backhoes last summer, trying to scrape the gravel out of the ditch. You had a mini excavator there. Is this on Union? Yes, and 30th. Both spots. And with, uh, just a month ago, you had your big, great big excavator up there, trying to clean the stuff up out of the ditch and pull it back on the shoulder of the road. Near as I can figure, it's close to three thousand dollars, somewhere between two and three thousand dollars in the last year. Um, do you of, have a figure? One of the problems on Union is going to get solved until that dam gets built back. Well, which I understand. I guess I'm a dumb work. farmer. You're going to have to explain that one to me. Why is that a problem? I think because of the, the water that overflows it over some of the rain. But doesn't it do that when the pond's full too? I mean, that would be like saying, with that kind of logic, it would be like saying, let's build the bridges on the river 25% size because the lake's going to catch it 90% of the time. Well, that's true, but does that make, does that excuse not, <coughs> not to fix them, just keep, keep no, pissing so money down the creek? We have issues all over. I know you do, with one inch of rain? In places right now, yeah, because everything's saturated, pond are all full. I don't doubt that. If I could go back. Is there a dam to the west of your place there? There's ponds up there. There is one inch of rain at my place for six hours on 30th. And there's no culvert there there's at all? There's four culverts in there. Oh, they're plugged? No. They're so just there's four culverts in there. There are three 30-inch culverts and one 36-inch culvert. And that would be one of the spots that I would estimate that you spent $3,000 on in the last year. And all those places are sitting now with no gravel on them. It's washed off. But I would assume they're going to re-gravel at some point this summer. If I remember right, several years ago, the chef looked at that. He was talking about a 40-foot long, 4-foot high opening. Yeah, I know that. Your million-dollar bridge. I've heard all that before. That's way bigger than anything that's above it coming down to there. Maybe down to the low water crossing. Yeah. We asked for that 30 years ago. They just, no. So, no. could I go back to what you originally said last year? You came in about a year ago, mm -hmm. give or take, springtime or something. And I even offered to help pay for it. And what, what was the discussion? I wasn't oh, here, so. Basically the same as what we're having right now, except I didn't get into dollars and cents of what you spent. But, it, but you, you even offered to help pay, but what was going to be the solution to that? The solution was that they were going to talk to Mr. Chef to come out and look at it and, and get back to me and let me know what was going on. And so whatever happened from the board's perspective? I think he went, they went back to what the chef said originally, 40 foot long, 4 foot high, box So you never had anybody look at it again? I don't, I don't know if you had it. I can't remember when John finally quit. Well, you have minutes, don't you? I mean, this is a board. I would think everything. Well, I, I think there's one spot half a mile upstream that's got a seven foot diameter, like a railroad tanker tube in there that never goes over the road there. So I don't know why you need a 40 foot long bridge. To me, that's just looking, that's have, an out for not having to do it. I think it has to do with the height. The height of what? I don't think you could put it. Well, sure. How about a five foot by ten foot? Five foot high, ten foot long. You don't need a forty foot long. I've been there for thirty five years. I know what the water flow is. So what what is a dollar amount you'd be willing to spend on culverts? You've spent three thousand the last year. What's a dollar amount you'd be willing to spend on culverts in that? Well, for one thing you gotta figure out what you're just putting in around the tubes. You only put so many in an area. 
figure out how to keep them. What's the dollar amount you'd be willing to spend there? I have no idea. Uh, 10,000? 5,000? 20,000? I have no idea. Is this a spot that's getting graveled every year? Several, several times, times a year. year. <laughs> oh, four spots, several times. I estimate in the last 30 years that it's been at least $30,000 spent on each one of those. And apparently this is all over the county. What you just said, right? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't even started gravel this year because all we've done is a pair of roads and floods. Well, we didn't a lot have of gravel. Floods. I mean, uh, we were saturated. We had 3.8 inches of rain in May. Over yeah, that could rains. come in one rain. Now, that was one inch. Imagine what, what 3.8 inches would look like. We're cut off from emergency services, no ambulances, no fire trucks. It's Our two, employees can't get in. It's two times in the last school year that I had to drive through water to get kids to the school bus. And the school bus had to stop and back half a mile down the road to get turned around on a mud road. I leave sometimes at 4 in the morning before it starts going over for 12 hours to get to school. One day I did that and it was 4 in the morning and I went through water that I probably shouldn't have gone through. It scared me to death. Called my commissioner the next day. Oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to do, but we've heard this over and over. Let me we're ask you this. Something. You say you got it all over the county. How many places is it over the road for 12 hours all over the county? Well, there were some down south that they were just now got around the fixing the other clip running across the road. But you have a main, deep water, a main, three foot deep water for 12 hours all over the county. A main gravel road. Some of them are gravel, yeah. These are bus routes. <coughs> I mean, we've got, it's not just us that live out there anymore. There's a lot of young families. Union's a pretty heavily gravel road. <coughs> And right now, it's sitting there in each one of those spots in a poor condition. And actually, it's probably worse after they gravel it because it's a hidden condition. Because they come back home and pull all the loose stuff up out of the ditch and put it on the edge of the road. And then they cover it up with fresh gravel and it looks like a nice road. What do you suppose happens if the semi gets over too far on that when they pull all that stuff up on the shoulder of the road? Because the shoulder of the road is gone. Sure, it's off. I went down Union after the the very last set of heavy rains, and so I saw what that road kind of looks like. And you're saying nothing's been done to this point; it's still washed it's still out. Barricades the on. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's barricades on a bridge on Green Valley. So Road. quite yeah, frankly, it would be a good time to put something in there because it's already half washed away before you have to remove more of what you put on they to came, double the work. They came and scratched Not the gravel out of the dirt. You're the big. Huge Forty-eight foot of them. 
that was for a job in Topeka, and then they decided they didn't want them, so they're selling them at half price. You had enough of them there to fix two of the spots. I mean, if you spent three thousand the last year, that looks like a no-brainer to me. You said they're ten by five. Five foot high, ten foot wide. That's inside dimensions. If we raise that, <coughs> if we raise the road up, is it going to cause any problems back towards your house and buildings? No. There's no buildings down in there. Yeah, it's in a kind of a valley. Yeah, you'd have to have a twenty foot deep in there to get up to our house and buildings. How, you said McPherson Concrete has how many of those? They have 48 feet of them. They're in six foot long sections. And he, we were just talking about 30 feet because he thought that's what. I wouldn't be surprised if you would take them all, they would negotiate a better price. Because like I said, they had them for a job in Topeka and they backed out on them. So they're just, they've had them for two years and he wants to get them off the lot. Well, we can discuss it with him. What did you say the price was per foot? I'm sorry. Two hundred dollars a foot. Two hundred. Okay. And I I measured a lot of bridges on the Green Valley Road and around. It looks like 20, 22 to twenty six foot is what most of them are. So. Well, anything new would be wider than that. Those one of those bridges on the Green Valley Road is relatively new. I had asked about what we keep in stock for inventory on culverts. What what do we keep? I mean, they I said that that wasn't listed in our inventory list that I saw, so. 24, 30, 36, I think. John, about metal over. At all? What what we keep metal's at all? all that metal. Metal. Metal's all we have. Yeah. This there a for that? Your concrete. Mm -hmm. Your concrete one's like he's talking about it. They have to be sized for each individual place. That's why, that's why this guy can't sell those because nobody has that specific size. Uh, yeah, I mean, because they, uh, the reason I'm asking why you're using metal versus concrete because the metal ones will flow the same size metal ones and the same size concrete. The concrete will flow more water than corrugated because corrugation slows down the, the water flow. Are the concrete round or square? You can get them either way. But the ones I talked about were square. The round ones are half the price of the square ones. You can get five foot round culverts. Or the concrete ones for a hundred dollars a foot. So the other two places on Union, they wouldn't need five foot culverts. You're talking about less than two thousand dollars for the culverts to fix them. So when is the last time you had correspondence with our highway department about this? I talked to Mr. O'Hare on Monday morning of last week, like seven a.m. before the commissioners meeting. And you haven't heard anything back as far no. as? Okay. At that time, I had, if they were going to fix the modern union, I had offered to pay for the dirt work if the county would buy the culverts. I'm not sure that offer is on the table anymore since I found out how little it costs to fix them. Because I've been told for years it was going to take a million dollars to fix these things. And it's not anywhere as close to that. So I don't know who told you. Maybe not. I've been to mill. I've been insulted. I've been lied to by commissioners. I've been ridiculed. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm tired of it. I guess we got a serious situation, and I'm tired of it. I came here in one last effort this morning, and obviously I'm getting nowhere. But I've talked to legal representation, and I and his told you that we discussed it with Mr. O'Hare when you came in. Yeah, and I've been told that many times, and I leave, and that's the last I hear of it. Yeah, we read the minutes every time you have a meeting, and there's never anything in there. And in in my attorney's process. opinion, you have some legal liability, because it's not a normal rainfall event that's causing a problem. And we've let you know numerous times. And from now on, I will be documented when it's over the road, how long, how much rain it took to do it. I'm, I didn't want to get to this part. I'm sorry. I'm not a believer in suing people. No. But I've been here for 20 years trying to get this fixed. i got a business that I'm trying to run. We can't get our deliveries in. 
we can't get our employees in. So I, guys come in every week with feed. When we, have, when we have storms, I need to be able to go out and check the netting on the pens. I need to check whether the generators are running. I either have to think, well, am I going to be able to get back, or do I need to hurry up and get out before the water comes up and hope I can get back? I'm sick of it. <clears throat> I think you have a legitimate point of view, and I apologize because I do understand that you're running a business and you're generating tax revenue for our county. We're bringing over a million dollars back to Lincoln County. Right, and that's from important. all over the country. It's important. It is, and for you to feel like your concerns have been ignored is unfair. And you're not the only one that has brought this to this table. Um, in the last half a year, several people have had this same standpoint that you're expressing. And I think it is time that we address these things, not just individually, but on a grander scale. You know why you don't have money to fix things? Because it's all being pissed down the creek every time it rains. We don't fix anything. We band-aid. Just well, like think, these positions. Yeah, these spots. Yeah. You, you just In the last 30 years, all these spots, you spent a whole year's gravel budget on those. Just repairing them. You just watched the board make a decision that was completely legitimate. I mean, they voted to do something without seeking any outside, you know, uh, bidding, without doing anything. These decisions have been costing us money, and in the long run, we haven't assessed where the needs are and where the priorities are. And I've been asking for several months, specifically with the highway department, where are our priorities? Because we don't even have a map in this room. We just got one. It's hopefully coming out to check up on that but you know we can't even look at your road and say and, and they'll pull out their little books and say oh it's over here but have we marked these things and said this is a, a primary road and this needs immediate attention because if you're saying not just last year you've been in but for previous years you know we had another person come in who said they were in the same situation he did just get new culverts and it's working out really well so there is a way to please you and to do our job which is to provide you services for the money that you put in, and I hope to get that done. I really do. I hope that we can move forward. I'll give you forward. another example of why you don't have money to fix things. A mile west of my place on the Green Valley, Valley Road, there's a bridge right now that has a barricade on it. It's been that way for more than, the barricade hasn't been there for more than 10, than 10 years, but it's been in bad shape for 10 years. A wing wall has fallen off. So they come in and they nail a bridge plank on it, and every time the grader comes by, he shoves a little more dirt over there so you can keep the hole full. In the meantime, in that 10 years, it's been undermining the corner of the bridge, which, you know, a couple thousand dollars right now, or 10 years ago, would fix that wind wall. But now we're, we've been sitting here for 10 years. Just That's a major expense now. Now it's gonna, yeah. if it falls apart, if it caves in, it's going to be a million dollars. Some of those are assessed as to the cost of repair versus the cost of replacement. Yeah. So a couple thousand dollars to fix certain, it? Certain bridges are to the point they need replaced, not repairs. So you just let it sit there for 10 years, undermining the bridge? This seems to be a recurring theme. We just had a discussion I'm, last week about a bridge in the I'm sorry, situation. but I've been over backwards trying to work with you guys. I've offered dirt. I've offered right away. I've offered to do the fence work. I've offered to help pay for it. What more can I do? And it's not to please us. It is to do your professional duty as a board to take care of things in your county. And that, like, if it was just a home and it was just a mud road, I'd say, you know, I chose to live there. I can deal with mud roads. I'll get me a four-wheel drive. But this is a this is a big business out there, and it's not just going to go away. And and the fact that there are three young families with children less than three years old out there, and children that are in high school. Yeah, he's going to have teenage drivers that well, it's not are going to be making it's decisions to drive whether they drive through water or not. You, you want to leave that up to a teenager? Ten years 
ago there weren't all these young families. I'm glad we're having these young people coming back. Oh, Jordan, or not Jordan, Jesse, Zacho, they've got a bunch of kids just a mile down the road. That's another family. It's getting to be kind of a populated area out there, which is, <laughs> I mean, I would have never <laughs> believed this would happen 10 years ago, but it is. And I'm Jared happy Sulfur about it. Like. But you can't just ignore it anymore, I don't think. It's not just me. <laughs> not just our business. Not, well, I say, I'm sorry. I've tried to be nice as long as I can, but I'm not going to play nice anymore. Heaven forbid one of us would have a heart attack or something um, in one of these conditions. Mr. Chairman, I think it might be appropriate to at least give him some sort of response. I told him we would talk over when he came in. I don't know what else I can tell him. If what he's talking about is, is something that will work out there, then maybe we can do it. But I'm not going to sit here and tell him that we're going to put five foot tall soldiers in there. But what are you going to tell him that you spoke to our department head who then has to speak to and we're not going to be able to pay for an engineer to come out and do an assessment and all these other things, you know, I'm not sure at what point this board is willing to take on responsibility for initiating the decision. It seems like when we make decisions to hire people through contract that we've never sought any other route, that's fine. But when someone asks for a road repair, push it down the road, push it down the road, have someone else look at it. Oh, we can't afford to have other people come in. To me, that's just get me out the door. We'll talk to the road. We'll talk to the department head. That's just get me out the door. Go well, on. at some point, there's going to have to be an engineer involved if we're going to raise the road that much. Because we we just can't go out and raise roads any place we want to raise. How much is that going to raise the road? Two to three feet. There's already three foot culverts in there, so raise it. Put a five foot in there, you're only raising a two foot. You don't raise the road two foot when you pull the shoulders up and grade it all up and shape it. Not that. I mean, it goes back to the original life. And we have, why do we you have need a road out here. We have to have survey all the time because is there's there is gravel. The guy legal says reasons that you need an engineer. Yeah, actually, it is. I mean, we're, because you're <coughs> talking about legal reasons that we need this done too. I mean, we. In my <clears throat> my opinion was that when you put the five foot by ten foot box covered in. You leave the existing culverts there, so you still have that that flow, also. So you're more than tripling the flow. Because right now you have three 30-inch culverts and one three-foot culvert. That's the one on 30th by my house. The one on Union, you have a 30-inch and I think a 24-inch. It gets smaller every time it crosses the road. But you yeah. said three 30-inch and one three-foot, one 36-inch, and they're that's right, right that's side. right where the water was coming over right there. <clears throat> Normally when we raise the road, we have to get the board with a lot of resources involved in it and everything. I mean, it, it, it's not our requirements, it's the state's requirements. We can only raise the road so high over so big a distance. I realize in this case it's only going to back water up on you. But, you know, there are regulations that Back up a lot less water than it does now. It's already backing up water on me. I don't know what difference it makes. But it's not backing it up three more feet back. You understand what I'm saying? It probably, if it was fixed, it wouldn't back it up at all. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, it's going to help the problem, not hurt the problem. Actually, backing it up helps because you get head pressure, then you get more flow through it. You know, I, David, I don't have a problem with doing something. Came back the last time of what the, what the engineer said it was going to take to do it. It was expensive. And that's why I didn't get done. If, this, if, if, if you feel like this is a solution and we can get it through the board, a lot of resources and everybody, I don't have a problem doing something. I really don't. Well, and I know 
you guys think we've had excessive rainfall this year, but we, we haven't. Actually haven't up there. We haven't seen near the flow through those areas that we saw in the 80s and 90s. And you yes, the last 15 years we've been in a drought and it hasn't been as much of a problem. But if we're back to normal rainfall, there's a lot more water to come down to than what has been coming. I don't know what normal rainfall is anymore. It seems well, it's probably like true. Seven or eight inches through a period of time, and that doesn't rain again for six months. Well, I'm sorry, but it seems to me that if this, if these were within 15 miles of Lincoln, they'd been fixed a long time ago. Uh, I don't know about that. There's a lot of places close to that with that problem. Not with that kind of problem. <clears throat> the water goes over the road by my house. Yeah, it goes over the road down here by the park, too. I mean, it is. But is that the only way? You can go around that. Okay. You can't go around these. No, I was just using it as a point. And is it over the road down here for 12 hours of the park? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe it is. Been, yeah. But on a regular basis? Uh, fairly regular, it seems like. But again, like I said, you can go around that. People aren't cut off from emergency services. They can't. They, employees can get to work. We have two employees that we have to get in every day to work. We have a chick scheduled to come. They have to come that day. There's that, no, that no occasion, waiting on water. The occasion here that you, I had video that I showed you, that was 12 hours after we had chicks come in. Truck loads of feed come in once to twice a week. <clears throat> Birds can't yeah. wait to eat. Those chicks sitting there waiting 12 hours is not good. The sooner you can get them down and get food and water in, the better. Uh, they said, why don't they just come a week later? Yeah. <laughs> it's a week. Yeah. They're hatched. They have to come. You they've, been scheduled since <laughs> they've been scheduled since December. You know? they, you just don't change it. <laughs> well, we, we said our piece. We, we'll talk to Michael and see what, if he says we have to go through the board of water resources and all that. <laughs> He's supposed to be here at 9 o'clock, since you're already in town, just so you know. But Terry, my concern is, why why does our position seem to be, oh, well, it's everywhere, it's always a problem, it is, it is, it is, it is, and we're not taking a proactive stance as to figuring out, I mean, why do we have to have someone come in here and suggest to us that we contact McPherson Concrete, that he's already found out the price, that these are the sizes available? I'm wondering because why... Because, Alexis, we've already had an engineer, and the engineer said that what it needed. But now you're telling him that the solution is to talk to our department head, who is inevitably going to call an engineer if we feel unqualified as we are. Happen. Right, so then what are we going to do? Come back and tell him, well, the engineer is again suggesting this 40-foot million-dollar project? I mean, I feel like this is, you're just giving him the circle here. Well, the last engineer was against raising the revenue. I don't know what, he's not around anymore. I don't know what the new engineer will say. But at that time, if that's what the first engineer said, why was there not a follow-up to seek a more affordable route? I mean, one person, you can, you tell me at this table all the time, you're entitled to your opinion, Alexis. You're entitled to your opinion. An engineer is also entitled to his opinion. He went to school to get a degree so that he has a foundational knowledge, but he's also entitled to his opinion, and you can seek other people's opinions to, you know, weigh out and balance what the options are, and I feel like the position of this board is continually to reject new options or to actually seek information. I'm concerned that we don't have this type of information coming from within our department instead of coming at us from, you know, an external source, which it, they don't get paid to do this. You know, we have people that get paid to come up with this kind of information. You know why you have to raise the road two foot? Because two foot of us wash out into my pasture, covered up my fence. You come up to the culverts and the road goes down like this. That's the only reason you have to raise the road. The water actually has to, water has to come out of the culverts and flow up to get away because there's so much gravel just piled up. Yesterday. I actually had to go in the spring and dig it out with my tractor out? loader so were those in the culverts the that are there could work. Uh, After they have dumped in trying to keep the road from washing away. Oh, they've dumped, they've they've dumped rocks everything. in there. They've I mean, asphalt the, in there. all that wash, like on the south side of the road, was that packed into the road at one time? Yes. And now it's just those big chunks that. Yeah. 
that was like the base, the road base. They dumped that in there hoping that it wouldn't wash away anymore. Asphalt, big rocks. Right on top of the culverts. That's where that came from. Or the from. shoulder, the south edge yeah. of the road. Yeah. Okay, up again. Okay. And yeah, now it's all the done. The done a lot of work. They work there all the time. It's kind of sad because they could fix it and be working somewhere else. A lot else. of hours. I can't say that we haven't had attention. We have had a lot of attention. Mm. Like I say, there was one time last year that I know there was four gravel trucks, maybe there was five, I, but at least four, all day, and a motor trader graveling those spots on Union. Mm. It lasted four days before it's getting trade. Maybe it's time that you didn't do it the same old way that you've done it forever and, and be everybody's hero and do something a little different. Solve some problems. It's not that we don't get attention. I said we were getting all kinds of, but it's just sad to see the money wasted. Well, that's where I'm at as a taxpayer. I'm, I'm pissed off watching my tax dollars just get washed down the drip. Not just at my place, everywhere. You got bridges and culverts, at least in Seeker Township. I don't know how the rest of the county is. Full everywhere. Bridges that far from the top. Limestone arch bridges that could be very good for a long time if they're maintained. That are full of dirt. So I don't know how you maintain them when they're they're full of dirt. I've cleaned some of them myself. Where I farm on both sides of the road, I dug them out last fall. One of them now was completely cleaned out. The water flow was, what was in the bridge has been carried out because I dug the dirt out that was on both sides of it. And we're nervous about doing that kind of thing because we don't want to upset somebody. But we're not the only ones who've seen it all over. Our neighbors are doing the same thing. So I mean, if you I know it's, one person, you I know it's illegal, everybody. but. If you guys aren't going to take care of them, somebody has to. Were you using a shovel by hand? No, I was not using a shovel by hand. So, one of the things that I had suggested, um, <clears throat> which everyone in the room screamed liability, but you know, we could try to work a little bit with the public. You're already saying that these are some of the things that you've had to do. I know other people have shared the same concerns. We could have a day or a week you know, where we engage people to help do this so that we kind of have one one big effort to get some of these things cleaned up. Um, I've had people show me where culverts were so plugged they couldn't even stick a, you know, a T-post into the end. Some of them you can't even find them. What about the one you were showing me? Um, these are just some things that have come up, different people's ideas, um, things that I've mentioned. I don't know how to get everyone on board. You know, it seems like all the fingers constantly point as me as I'm at me as I'm so divisive. But here we are hearing from you guys the same concerns we've heard over the last couple of months and we can blame it on the rain and we can blame it on whatever, but we all know that these culverts didn't get plugged in one season or even one year as that goes. 40, 50 years. Right. And and so and so there we don't even have to put, you know put the blame on those who are acting right now. Yeah. But it is those who are here now that need to do something differently about it. Forty years. Once the culvert's plugged, you're screwed. Because then you got to clean it out. Mm -hmm. When there's still some and it's flow a lot through, more work. You're, you're, when there's still some flow through, if you can clean it out on both sides, and then you can let the water. A lot of times, anyway, the water will do the work and clear it on out. We could have a full-time crew doing it. I don't doubt that a bit. And why is that not a priority then? Well, I think there's 23, 23 employees that have to take care of everything. And they don't, you can't take three of them and just have them doing nothing but cold. So then when are we as a board, the leadership, going to say, this is the two-year plan? These are the people we're going to hire. This is the amount of money that we're going to spend. These are the projects that we're going to do. And it's a 24, 36 month ordeal. When are we going to do that and decide that we're not just going to keep kicking the can down the road? When are you going to, one thing we're under a tax when, when are you going to start 
thinking maybe it's more important to clean culverts than blade roads, and maybe the greater man ought to be out cleaning culverts. They do some. Maybe someplace, but not in my area. So is it cheaper to keep the culvert cleaned out or to replace that when it's clerical mud? I'm not disagreeing that they need to clean it up. I'm just telling you we don't have the manpower to go around and keep them all clean. I mean, there are thousands. I, I have no so we just don't do it. And that's been an accumulative, accumulative problem, is why it's to where it is. I mean, I mean basically, I saw our bridge. They didn't all plug up yesterday. The only thing our bridge crew has been doing for the last year is cleaning out culverts and replacing culverts. That's all they've been doing. They haven't built a bridge. But again, I can pick on that too if you'd like, because I saw culverts being put in on a dirt road. And I feel like I can say that that didn't have to be done, not a high priority, because I farm on both sides of the road. When you got gravel roads that need to have that done, why were we doing it off on dirt roads between me and Dan Watson? Because we don't have a list of priorities at all, as far as I've asked to see it. If it's there, maybe it's there. It hasn't been shown to me. I think you really need to start working. Correct. But as you can see, some of us choose not to speak at all or give you any acknowledgement, and this is a continual problem. Well, I've known you guys for a long, long time, and, and I know that you're very good people and, and want to do what's right, but it, uh, I, just as an outsider, it looks like you need to work together somewhat. Well, unfortunately, I know they will disagree with this, but it comes down to mine. I'd love to hire for a four more guys. I, would I don't disagree with that at all. I, I just think you're if you look at you're not managing you look, your money wisely. If you look at us compared to most of the other counties in the state, we, we probably have the smallest. I don't disagree with that a bit. But you know why you don't have business in Lincoln County? Because you got a business sitting right here that has that is being hindered by the road department. Well, I, I think it's wonderful the way our roads get graded probably awfully often. I mean, I'm not going to put down getting my road graded because I don't want to never see the main painter again. But I grew up on, you know, country roads my whole life, and it was like every two weeks, every three weeks. Not, I love Dave, he's a good friend of mine, but every week we, he, he spreads a rock. Some of that was because of the larger vehicles. They didn't have vehicles on the roads 20 years ago at that. I bet Osborne County roads don't get bladed maybe once a month. Maybe the limestone. The Osborne County Township system. Yes. Yeah. That's why. And they're like a highway. But the, but like the limestone highway. roads are not township, they're county. That's the dirt roads that are county. So the county is responsible, I haven't talked to them, the county is responsible for what they would consider to be the main, the main roads FSA that are gravel. And the township does their own dirt that's not gravel. That's well, that's, they that's, take care of their gravel too. That's just yeah. part of a limestone road. You, that's keeping it good. You don't want to blade it because you break the seal on it. So, I think what Mitchell County, the actual county, has less than 200 miles of road in that road that they maintain, and the rest of them are all maintained by townships. Could we start by showing them the video of the water? Just well, I'm sure Michael. He said McPherson of the concrete's got a couple of box culverts down there, 48 foot. 48 foot in length. They're yeah. five foot tall. Ten foot wide. They want to get rid of the cheap because they've had for two years. That was one inch range south of my house. That was the same time that it went over Union and the other three places. But you have to raise the road up to put Maybe one about adding them to what you're going to do. already there. A five by ten. Can we raise the road that far without going through the border water resources? You got a three foot in there now, so you're talking going up to five foot. We would have to visit with our engineer first. 
to do that. We can't just go change that drainage without an engineer's opinion on that. He's out there want to get rid of it. That's all the cheese. So. What is the legal restriction that you need to have an engineer? Adding or changing the size of drainage, I believe. I don't have the exact word. Were you um, were you working on this project at all when they had requested and someone came out and the engineer had suggested a forty foot bridge, right basically? Foot by four foot. I can't remember. Sure. He wasn't a road to provide. I'm trying to think. I might have been on a bridge crew back when that was going on. Yeah. So I assisted in putting those pipes in. So. so I think what we've been discussing here, Mr. Rocker came in to express that this has been a problem and he came in last year about this time and there was a discussion and, and he's concerned that they continually have maintenance being done to the to these same spots right there, you know, surrounding their property, and the money that's being put into that area um, doesn't exceeds. justify. Yeah, it exceeds what we would need to spend to just fix the problem. And now that it's washed out because of these last rains and the the state that it's in would probably be an appropriate time to get to it so that you're not yet again covering it over patching it and then digging it up when the time comes. So we were wondering what your suggestions would be. First of all, to visit with an engineer and find out if we're going to spend the money on it, I'd like to eliminate the problem of water going over it with a typical three inch rain. You know, granted, one inch rain. We're not going to ever fix it on a probably four inch plus or even maybe a three inch plus. Probably not. That does get wild. But uh, you know, that one inch of rain was probably comparable <coughs> to a three inch of rain in a normal year because all the water stored it was full. It was full. I mean, there's no yeah. doubt about that, and the ground was saturated. Yes. But I have seen it over the roads like that with a two inch rain with yes. a solid dark hole. I'll agree with you. And what he's saying is that it's been repeatedly graveled. So here we are, you're telling me in other meetings that we can't gravel other spots that are just wet and, and need some topping but we're continually putting gravel on this situation that has needed addressed for several years. I think it was gravel four times in the last year, probably. And between the last fall and last uh, a year ago. And it's sitting there now, needs it again. <laughs> and they did say like that they're thankful. 30th by my place and on Union by him. Four loads to a spot, because a lot of times you're trying to Fill the edge of the road where it's washed away too, potentially. And you've had to backhoe up there twice last summer, and a mini excavator last summer, and your big, big excavator this year. And here's I can figure we're pushing three thousand dollars in the last year, and it's sitting there now. Need to travel again. First pot. I don't know what you figure for gravel, paying the landowner and piling it. Loaded on a truck and hauled up to my place, but certainly five, six dollars a yard, I would think. Pretty close. Well, you want to run that by Urban Michael and see what that's like? Yeah. Someone's planning on doing this week. If you contact them, typically how long does it take for them to come out and look at something? It depends. Sometimes they come the same day, sometimes it might be a week or two down the road. It just depends on it's cold. where they're going. It's cold. It's going to sit there forever. Yeah, that was my opinion. Just leave the existing culverts in there and put them. The five by ten in with them, with more than triple the, the flow that's there now. Yeah, I think more than water resources. I have to do a study because they will allow you to do only so much to increase the height of the road. Or anything. You're gonna have to increase it two foot. You got a three footer in there now. The, there's gonna be it's in the ditch anyway. It was probably two foot higher to begin with. There's gonna be an issue of putting <laughs> five by ten in with the existing culverts because when we do that. It changes the width of opening, and when you start putting in multiple culverts, they start adding up the width of not only your culvert, but the distance in between your culverts, and then it'll be classified as a bridge. Why is that a problem? I can go over 20 foot. It's not necessarily a problem if it fixes the, the issue. 
the downside to it is we'll have to do biannual inspections on it. But either way, you know, if we build a structure on its own, it's going to be requiring an inspection also. And basically, Who does those be inspections? Our consulting engineer service. I see. And do you pay them a fee to the like yearly fee? Probably buy per buy per inch. Buy per inch. We have the same thing on the watershed board. We have to have our, our high hazard dams inspected every so often. By the dam. I thought maybe we usually run about $100 to $105 a bridge for something simple. Okay. Well, the we get into fracture critical, critical and stuff like that, you're looking at anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 for the bridges we have. So. That'd still be a savings over the gravel that you're having to put in all the time, huh? Well, anyway, first and Broad Creek has 48. But in length, in length. A five by ten. A five foot high, ten foot wide. The, what did you? A job in the future that they backed out on and they've had them for two years and wanted to get them off their lot and they were willing to sell them for $200 a foot, which is basically half price what he told me. I wouldn't be surprised if you was going to take them all, they would negotiate a better price than that. Excuse me one second. Michael, what did you say the, the width is that when they start combining the culvert lengths and call it considered? 20? When you get to 20 feet. Okay, well, if we were to use what he's talking about, we wouldn't get to 20 feet. It wouldn't. With the spacing yeah, in between yeah. the culverts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're probably that right now. How much space <laughs> are you putting between the culverts? With the culverts, you're probably more than 20 foot now. Absolutely. Well, there's a formula for it, and I don't have it in front of me. And I can show it to you sometime. It's going to be on the edge. But at the end of the day, if it works, it doesn't matter anyways. If that's an option that's feasible. Just something I wanted to bring to everybody's attention that it would turn it to a bridge. There used though, to be a bridge there. Yeah. They tore it years ago. Well, and this is one of the things, you know, had it been fixed 20, 30 years ago. You wouldn't have the regulations that you have now, and it's only going to get worse the longer you postpone it, the more regulations there's going to be. You can't imagine how it all changed when that bridge fell down in Minneapolis. Oh, that's not sure. about two years ago. Unbelievable. What do we what do we have to pay the engineer for con consulting us on something like that? Do they have an hourly fee, or how do they charge us? So far, they haven't charged me. They're doing it uh, kind of as, as in kind. Since that we contract way, with them for other bridges and That such. way, if we do do something with them, they intend us to use them for those services. We probably have all the drainage stuff already from the chef study, haven't we, as far as the area. There's close to 3,000 acres come down through there. Somewhere. Well, I think we've done all we can do today. We'll run through the engineers and see what they think. Can we? I was told that last year, too, so. Well. Maybe it, it might be appropriate to do something formal, so I'm wondering how long you think you need to at least contact the engineers and find out when they can come out and do that as soon as possible, if not at least have it scheduled so that we can follow up. Well, we'd love to come back in and see what, what they say. Two weeks, hopefully. That's not a guarantee, of course, I don't know what their schedule is. We can let you know. Great. Heard that last year, too. <laughs> We didn't Sorry, we didn't, has, we didn't let you know. So. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have the just solution. Just pointing that out. I didn't let you know. I've heard all this before. Well, anyway, maybe we came up with solutions. Maybe that'll help. Well, two weeks from now, we shall at least discuss it again, and it will not be left from the table yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, we'll meet again in two weeks. Correct. So oh, every Monday, Monday, so. Okay, we'll come back. Yes. I'm going to look at the date there for you because I can't think of it. It would actually be the July, the 3rd. July 3rd. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, sure. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I get your name real quick? Ryan Wacker. Ryan? Or Y-A-N? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> some research into that Duke Solutions Mobile 311. Uh, we're going to be having another conference with them this Wednesday to try to get some more information that works on how it operates and everything. So. Awesome. Uh, storm went through last week. We had doors blown off out of the meat department. I'm currently working on getting some pricing and we'll change the uh, style of door from the barn style to a bowl of I think it would be a lot more secure and eliminate the possibility of it blowing off like that again in the future. Insurance claim turned in. And then uh, the weight increase on the trucks that the state passed, you went from 85.5 to 90,000 pounds on spread axle. That will be for state only. That does not include federal roads or county roads unless there is a permit given. If there's no permit given, they will be operating. Yeah, or you are. I'm trying to get some progress made on hauling some gravel. And then some of the dirt roads laid in and everything ready for harvest for kind of effort. I'm out here, it's going to take off. doing multiple projects that are not going to be high exposure on the roads. Do we have a lot taking off the things? There's several. Most of them are doing like half days. Signage? Is it going on yet? No, not yet. It will be mid-July, I think. Springs in them, are they, have they stopped? Some of them are settled down. They're still a little spongy, but they're passable now. We've still got two or three that are still running that we haven't been able to do it anyway with yet. Do some more checking here today and see if they've any of them settled down anywhere we can't work on them. <coughs> Another route for those trucks up in there, anyway. Good road. Just 
little longer haul. They don't have to pull the hill. So we've got to go around the hill there on some of that. Are we done with Steve Schneider's road union in 45th, or what is the progress there? Uh, we got 50th uh, pretty well graded up. It needs some moisture so we can work it a little more here because the time they got the grass and everything worked down, kind of dried out and didn't pack down real good. So it needs a rain or two to kind of get it really settled in where it's decent at the end. Did you, did we grade the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Even I'm over gonna, top of the spots where I'm the... I'm just going to go out and grade a little spot here and another one here. If we're going to surface the road, I'm going to go from one end to the other because you cut a ditch here and then you don't have anything here and then you hold the water back here and you have all these problems. So if you just go right on through the whole thing and do it, it makes a lot better road. Okay. Um, did they, I, I don't know what the typical protocol is for that. Is that how they do it? You called it resurfacing. Is that how they do it for any yeah, road at any shape up the road and resurface the ground, look at sand or whatever, that's what we do. You have to get it where it'll drain someplace inside the road. Get the ditches all cut and the road raised up a little where the water will run off all that. Yeah. And then perhaps we're just kind of touching up a road or something, then we'll just kind of trim the edges a little or something. But if we need ditches for drainage, we're gonna do like that. Okay. Did did you talk to Steve after they had done that? Did Steve contact you? Oh, he called me about he wanted an entrance in because we had to cut through one entrance. There was no entrance there, and we had to cut a ditch through to get it to drain. Okay. And he was on the pipe, and well, I couldn't get it when he thought we should have had it because they were still working on it. I told him we'd be out the next day, and we were and got the pipe in. He called this morning. He was going to come in, and he just called me to tell me that he had something come up, and he couldn't come in. And we spoke for a minute, and he did say thank you for that culvert and the and the right of way there to get into the field. He appreciated that. His concern, um, which I'm just relaying, is pulling up the ditches on top of some of the roads that had already had a pretty good base. He said there's now about a foot of dirt on them. I'm just wondering. I mean, are you gonna put some kind of base in there to firm it up? Because we know ahead of time that there's sand going on top. So are we gonna line that a little bit so that something can pack in with that dirt? Well, he's talking about that. He was all over there about over them rock ledges and stuff. There's maybe that much stuff over. We just kind of covered him over. There's not a foot of material anywhere on that road. That if there's four inches, I'd be surprised any place on it. He was hollering about over those rock ledges, and just, yeah, they shaved the ditches because there wasn't any ditches. The water was coming down the hill, coming down on the road and back around, and it just washed everything away if we hadn't cut some ditches there. So we cut that, and it pretty much rocky, shaggy material that's on there, like I say. There's two inches of stuff, I'd be surprised. It just needs more sure to get it settled back down, back down, and it'll be fine. Do you think it would be appropriate before we get the moisture to add some material there to make sure it's a good base before he goes putting I don't sand see on top? Need in doing it because it's already a good base. No need to do it when you got a rock ledge underneath. There's no need to add material to try to it's not going to improve anything. It's going to make it worse of anything. Well, if you said there's four inches of dirt and then you add sand in that mix, that sounds to me like it's going to be pretty soppy. If the road is, gets moisture and gets settled in and packed down like all our roads do when we put sand or gravel or whatever on it's fine then. 
it just right now, it's all dry from stirring it around and working it, and the grass and stuff that was in it, it takes it a while to get settled down and the moisture, but when it gets back down, there should be no problem. Okay. Did we have the roller out there? Is there a reason that we would be unwilling to provide a few loads of gravel to ensure a good base when we just had a full 45 minute discussion with someone where we've been graveling their road yearly, multiple, three, four times a year? It's not any year, that was just this last year. They said for several years that there's been multiple trips made to gravel their road. She said, We've had plenty of attention. We're not complaining about getting attention. Wouldn't it be prudent to maybe make sure that we have a good base there? Uh, given the situation that we've dealt with this for months and knowing that with the agreement we have i believe that would be your whole decision if that's what you want we'll do it. yeah be good in my opinion like i say other than the rock ledges you've already got a good solid base under there or we can put more crap on top of it or gravel or dirt or whatever, it's already solid. You go down in the bottom where it's, there's dirt to begin with, it's, it's not changed a bit down there in the rest of the road from what it was. Think with me about a couple months from now and consider that if this doesn't get the proper amount of rain and we have our blade operator grading the road, and we have all fines on top, because you're saying what happened was we pulled the ditches up, so we have a lot of fines on top. We, we, we know we have that base on the road. I've driven it. There's a lot of packed rock in there. So when he goes to blade, what's going what's gonna to keep that consistency there? To What's going to congeal it if there isn't any heavy stuff in there to pack in with all those fines? Because you're talking about dirt and then sand on top of dirt, and what's he going to blade? It's shale and rock that they broke up when they pulled it out of the ditches and packed on top of that. It'll settle down, pack down in, just like it was earlier. It'll be the same thing as it was earlier. We just kind of build it up a little. It's not going to be any different than it was before. We started to work on it. All we did was smooth off the ledges and come out there and dropped off as you went down the road. Took a dirt road elevated it by cleaning out the ditches. You know, basically, I wouldn't call it an elevation, but more of just cleaning the ditches in preparation to put sand. And I Do honestly didn't ground? drive out there, so I can't say what I've seen with my own two eyes. I'm just saying simple science says you take the dirt, you put it on top of something that's already packed, then you sprinkle sand on top of it, and you're going to get a slush mixture because we have the ditches now pulled on top of what was already packed in. So you're going to have a slick that's portion one, underneath that's packed, and then you're going to have a mixture on top. Uses, that's one reason why we were not in favor of sand. But, you know, it, it's the same way we do all our roads. If we're pulling ditches on something, we pull the material, put it on the road, we blade it, we compact it, and we cover it with our material. But this wasn't a graveled road, right? So we're talking about, you're talking about pulling ditches onto a gravel road versus pulling ditches onto what's, a dirt road. What's the true difference? The difference is lack of gravel total versus gravel. But if you do it on a gravel road, you're pulling the dirt and the silt and everything the ditches and covering up the gravel. And then we're going with gravel on top of that. That's what you were just saying. The, the fact covering up the rock the dirt covering up the gravel. The, the road is the same material now as what it was prior to us working on it. It's just it's not fully compacted due to 
having the moisture content available. It's the exact same material. So then what happens if we don't get the moisture, is my question. That's what I'm saying. We're three months from now. We don't have any rain. Well, we've got a lot bigger things to worry about. Yeah. But they're going to we'll be dry, just like all our rivers are. When it's dry, they all start coming to pieces and stuff. If it has a lot of traffic, it'll get beat out. I just need you guys to understand, I'm trying to keep you from having future complaints. That's all. It's not a criticism of what you've done. I, as far as I understand, you got out there and did it in one day. That's, that's great. I'm saying, if you don't want to hear these same complaints and hear these same people in the future, like we've been hearing for the last six months, you know, sometimes we got to consider what we're doing here. And you're telling us it's a board decision. That's fine. Um, you know, I'm in favor of supporting these people that have businesses out in the country. These are the same people that we've heard from repeatedly. And I think it's, it's definitely a, a rural-wide issue, if I can call it that. But, Bob, if you're telling me that, you know, you've been here and you know that that's, the road is going to settle and it's going to do this, that, and the other thing, I'm going to trust you. I'm bringing it up because that's what he was going to come in here this morning and talk about. So, well, I know you're right. It's heavy, right? Like I said, in my opinion, after doing this for 65 years, building roads all over the state and stuff, I can't see a problem. Like I say, moisture is the only thing to settle down and other than that. I don't see a problem. I know, yeah, he can create all kinds of problems in his mind or whatever he sees out there. He thinks we down. But I'm sorry. I did what we always do, the way we always do it. All we have to depend on is Mother Nature control most of our activities. No matter what it is, whether it's wet or dry, one way or the other. Mother Nature says what we do or don't do. So. Okay, well, that's that's all he had for me, so. I trust Bob, you have Bob to the way it is, the way it is. Like I said, I know right now, yeah, it needs some weight and stuff, and it needs a little moisture to make things stay in place. I didn't think I'd have a say it this year, but we could use a little more. Yeah. <laughs> they earlier, uh, that's the last thing I wanted to hear. A little. I said a little. Yeah. Okay. A half inch. <laughs> what about as a band aid? Could you take a water sprinkler system and kind of wet it down to get it to kind of pack a little bit to? It takes, it, takes, it, takes, it, takes, it takes a lot of water. A lot of water. A lot of water. Does it? People think I take a truck of water. I was going to say, I didn't know, you know, if you could just maybe, you know, like sprinkle it down enough to get it to, like, well, stick to the road. It's like a mile and a half. So it's it was like, set with a dust down, but it takes. It's, yeah, it's not yeah. going to gonna get everything to piece together. Yeah, we're going to all work. It'll take 100 some miles. Three days. Or so. <laughs> Probably have to take more supplies out there to drain. Yeah. Big dollar a mile highway jobs, they do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, all the road big jobs jobs we did I just, you know, not any option because, you know, you're not getting the complaints all the time. But, but what I mean, was Swing County really talking progress? about doing to prepare their, they were going to, the, the what was their black cost top, per mile? The just, black top was like 200000 or some crazy. Yeah, number. but they, were, they had a figure for preparing the road for the black top, and it was. Yeah, it was high. It was hundred something thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't have that, but I, I remember when we talked about that. I read that. They were going to go through this year and prepare, and next year they were going to flip them. That was tremendous. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Jerry, you got anything? Your, your conference that you mentioned from that 311 uh, software, is that a phone conference? Probably a web. Oh, okay. Phone and audio and visual. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would like to make a motion 
I move that we allow the highway department to consult with McPherson Concrete and make an offer well, on those culverts. I talk to the engineer first. Well, those seem like sizes. I mean, what are the sizes? That, excuse me. Let me finish the motion that we permit the highway department to consult with and make an offer on the culverts that they have in stock. That's that. We can discuss it when the motion dies. Do I have a second? Motion dies to a second. I think if, if, if you get the okay, then I have no problem with you purchasing it. And what are the size culverts that we have right now that are metal? Because I was told that we don't keep any concrete on stock. So what are the metal sizes that we have for inventory? They range from 18 inch up to, what, 72 inch? Mm -hmm. we, we don't keep very many of the large ones in stock just due to the overhead. 72 inches you don't consider large? Yes, I do consider that large. We do not keep many of that size. Okay. 18s and 24s are our most common. So our highway department will put in a 72-inch culvert that we have on stock. These 72-inch ones, how long are they? Or what are their, that's their internal, uh, that's the yeah. Case. So what's uh, the, the length on those? About 30 foot, I think, we have on hand right now, so. So currently on hand, we have 72-inch by 30-foot metal culverts. And we, as our highway department, are capable of putting those in. So we're not interested, as a board, in five foot, which is 60 inch. Well, I don't have to rent a crane to move those. Yeah. I, okay, so where are we in that process that you guys were discussing about the, that kind of uh, we, equipment purchase? We were not going to purchase a crane. No, we purchase a large excavator. Is a large excavator going to be able to move that? I don't know what those ways, so I don't know. I think that would There's be six foot sections. Six by six by ten. Five by ten by six. Mm -hmm. I think it's, well, it depends on how big an excavator you get. You could get an excavator. Signet box and we've made here. Not all the sixteen foot. That's what that's what we put in out here on the detours. Don, did I repeat that motion that there. you could that you got it clearly? On the state page four. Four by eights, I believe. Four by eights. And when we set those boxes, we set them on a concrete pad. We go out and we do footings for it so that way they stay in place. In addition to the cost of the boxes themselves. So at this cost of $200 per foot, which I'm going by word of mouth here, but is not as expensive as if we were to shop around. I mean, this is, this is kind of a leftover deal from what I understood the conversation to be. We're not interested in negotiating with them or looking at a price. I think we have to have a place to put them first. I mean, he said they've been sitting on their lot for two years, so they're obviously not a size that most people are going to use. So there's no use in us having them sit here if we can't use them. And like they were kind of special order, and then they canceled the order. Yeah. I mean, if they've been sitting there for two years and nobody's wanted them, it's okay. because of the size of them that they don't want them. But what it comes down to is, is if the engineer is going to allow it. I mean, yeah. you may, if we get them and then the engineer doesn't allow it. You have to have a place. For yeah, you have to, it sounds like they're pretty specialized. But if, if the engineer will okay it, then they go down there. you guys were willing to, to let them negotiate sure. with them. 
Right, so that's my motion, to allow them to have this negotiation. It's After not the engineers have well, talked. We don't need a motion, we need to buy them yeah. if they fit the deal. We just made a motion two or three weeks ago for them to make a negotiation. That was on a truck, that's not something I normally purchase. I, you just told me we don't normally purchase this particular type of culvert. I'm a, I'm making the motion so that they are able to move forward with this. Hopefully, Mr. O'Hare would be in contact with the engineers right away and that they would be able to come out. We need to have something to provide to the table in two weeks. And if and when this engineer looks at that and says that that's a possibility to work that in, they should have the flexibility to go ahead and maneuver. They I mean, can. these are the kinds of things that... They can. They don't need a motion to get it done. Well, we need to pick up the phone and call them and ask. It needs to be in the minutes, and that's why there's a motion, just to clarify, so that everyone understands how this works. I'm not going to. Don has been doing a great job putting the discussions in the well, minutes. She can put but in we, the minutes so that we discuss purchasing five by ten box gold without a motion. Right, and then who's going to have to come back and scan through the minutes and make sure it's in there, and then ask for it to be it, it added in, and then get voted against to not have an addition or correction to the minutes. It's a procedural thing. Again, parliamentary procedure. It's it's what keeps the system coherent and doesn't let things slip through the cracks like they seem to have a tendency to do. Okay, guys, if that's it, I guess we're done. Figure out something on a new truck is going to work with the old bed or put a different bed on. Thank you. Get your letter. Hopefully we got You guys need to sign those. There's two copies. I did sign. Oh, well there's two. Oh, there's two copies. So then what is the cutoff for a for dollar amount for a department that does not have its permission to exceed its own expenditures? Um, what is the dollar amount cutoff for our county well, for I think it making a purchase? Well, it's something that they normally purchase. I mean, we don't approve every time they purchase a cold. So what you're saying is we don't have a policy. We don't have a purchasing if policy. If it's something that they're not, no, they don't normally use in their line of work. Then. So basically, they don't have to per request our permission for anything if we don't have a policy. I think we have an understanding with them. They know what they can purchase and what they need to come in and talk to us about before they do purchase. I think they, they actually could purchase what they wanted to purchase, but they just normally, if it's something that they think that, that they want our approval before they do it, then they come in and ask for it. So Otherwise, they run their department. Don, do we have a purchasing policy? I know you had said something about making a cap on purchases, but the sheriff's department doesn't have, there was some sort of lawsuit. Was that in Lincoln County only? No. Yeah, Ray Nealander versus Jack Jackson. What? The Ray Nealander versus Jack Jackson, they ruled that our purchasing Yeah, but it's the same ruling for every county. Mm -hmm. It was just a lawsuit was against Lincoln County. But every county has the same, it, it follows through to every county. Okay, Don, you have some. Uh, David Doe, he was able to be here, but he um, needs approval to seek a grant to attend the, an LEPC conference that's in Kansas City. So. It's a grant? Uh, he's applying for the grant to pay for it. And that, I think they'll pay for everything except for his meals.
this Colorado conference? No, this one is uh, one that's in Kansas City. It's oh. LABC a couple years ago. It was in oh, Nebraska. Oh, that was in Omaha, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is LaDonna going to or just him? I think just him. He didn't say anything about anybody else. Those are, that's the total for those other two. I was told by Kristen herself that she purchased the laundry equipment in, in Logan Park Manor. That's not new laundry equipment from the original that we had in there? I think those are washer and dryer repairs. Yeah. The washer and dryers we own. We own the washers and dryers. Now, sh she might own, like, the baskets and the rolly carts, but we own the washer and the dryers. Did we ever find the list that she made from the expenses that she claimed to be uh, offset to her debt to the county. I don't know. So what are we going to do about the the past due rent? No, I think we need to have a discussion with you about it at some point. Well, this board needs to have a discussion to decide what our position is. I believe that it needs paid. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't think it needs paid. Are you saying you do believe it needs paid? No, I, I, it, it's owed to the county. Okay. And we need to talk about a bill that is out there and how we're going to resolve that issue. Okay. I would also like to state then while we're on the topic that we paid a bill for a private business by I'm not sure what the word was used in the, in the addendum to the lease, but basically by foregoing rent for the close to the exact amount of that fine that was instituted on the business and not the building, you know, we used taxpayers' money to pay that fine for her, for her business. And that needs to be addressed along with the back rent. We're talking about a year's worth of rent that was just unpaid for multiple reasons that she gave, none of which she gave at the same time. And then also that fine, we for we forgot we had forgone thirty one thousand five hundred dollars and the fine that she paid to the CMS uh, survey was thirty two thousand five hundred. So one year's rent plus thirty two thousand five hundred. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to do anything about the fine difference because they signed an agreement waiving that fee. So, but they did it under the pretense that they were responsible as the county because this board was told by the business owner that the fine was on our property. So they signed that agreement under false pretenses. No, they did not. We did not sign it under false pretenses. So you the, knew the building the fine was against the business. It come down to the fact, is the business going to close, are we going to close the rest home, or are we going to keep it open? This board decided that the rest home was important to this community and we would keep it open and we would do what we can. We knew that the fine was against the business. However, if she closed the business and left the county, that building could not be opened as a rest home until that fine was paid. So that's therefore, fine. it would have come back to the county to pay it if we were going to operate that nursing home under anybody else's lease. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but it's not true because the fine was on Lincoln Park Manor. That is a business. It's incorporated. I said that it was on the business, but if she closed, that fine reverted back to the property. No, that's not true. The fine was that not, is what we were no, told the, by CMS. No, the fine is on the business itself, Lincoln Park Manor, which now someone else owns. You can't transfer a fine from a corporation to a property. That's, that's simply not true. But what you're telling me, what you're admitting, is that you knew that the fine wasn't our responsibility. So you're saying you paid it so that the place could stay open. 
But if that's true, Aljo, if you're telling the truth, why did she pay the fine up front, it's in the minutes, and then retroactively come back here and ask for forgiveness of rent in that same amount? She didn't retroactively. I'm asking Al Joe, and you're you're going to answer for him. She, it's in the minutes that she pay, She said she paid the fine because yes. it was due in one lump sum. And they had agreed. They no, just no. didn't sign the agreement until December. No, or whenever that's it not was. in the minutes. It says in the minutes that she had already paid it when there was a discussion about forgiving the rent before it was ever made into a motion. So if what you said is true, why did you make that decision? Or or how are we going? Let me you let me just correct told that. You. No, how are we going to correct that? Because that is completely wrong and unethical in many, many ways. Well, I guess, I guess, or I participated in the decision of this board. I want to tell you, there's a lot more to that that goes on than you even want to admit. But I was in contact with CMS, and I tried my best to get the fine lowered and actually get it wiped out. But I was not successful, I'll tell you that right now. I knew that that business would go under if that fine was not taken care of, that she was not able to do it at that time. Therefore, due to the economic impact on this community, it was my feeling, and I guess the rest of the commissioners went along with it, that we should step up to the plate and help. Now, maybe you don't agree with that decision. That's fine. You don't have to agree with the decision. But the decision was made by this board of commissioners, and that's what we did. And to me, it's water under the bridge. It's gone. But what she owed in back rent is probably is still on the table as far as I'm concerned. But that fine and that part is under the bridge, it's gone, it's over. I'm not and sure And I'm why not ready, and I'm not, I really don't think we have any reason to talk about it. The reason to talk about it is that you took someone else's money and paid a bill for someone else that wasn't even their bill to pay, the, the, the people whose money you used. It wasn't their bill to pay, so you took one person's money and paid someone else's bill with it. To me, that's a very serious ethical we pay Malays. bills every month with someone else's money. That every are bills month. according to the expenditures that are set forth by what we are propositioned to pay for. I mean, the fact that you don't even want to talk about this implicates something very we already fishy did. under We've the talked about it. I don't know how many times we've talked about it. No, I the was told, Terry, I can show you on the videos where you both sat here and told me the fine was on the building. No. I can, yes, you have all said that to me repeatedly. Some of the he people said in this it was room have heard stay it. with the building. No, no, whoever that's the new the, that's the new story. opened it up afterwards was going to have to pay the fine. The new story is that the the fine stays in the Whatever. building, which is still not true. Which is still, no, there I have I we moved got, to adopt the agenda based on parliamentary procedure. I moved to schedule the end of the month meeting to the evenings to encourage public attendance. What's the motion, Don? Read it back to me. Well, I have a, I have the moved to adjourn, and did you second it? No, I didn't second okay. it. Okay. And I then I, okay. Let's get that one first. Okay, so I have Terry Finch moved to adjourn the meeting at 9.52 a.m. Alexis moved to approve an agenda based upon parliamentary procedures and move the end of month meeting to the evenings so that the public can attend. Do I have a second? On which motion? There was not a second on my motion. There was a first, yeah, so we haven't even waited it for died. the motion to die. It died. Okay. Now Alexis motion, right?
Was that what two motions she made or one motion? Uh, one motion. Okay. I put the word and, so sure. Okay. And do I have a second? And that motion dies. I so need I have, a I permission. Why... Excuse me, the chairman is talking. I need permission to sign this Kansas Division of Emergency Management Hazard Waste Emergency Preparedness Grant for David. And I need a motion to allow me to sign it so he can apply for the grant. Also move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Would it be? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Would it be convenient to do one meeting a month, maybe, so of what the meeting could go? Kind of answer. I think it might answer a lot of questions. Of, you know, our end of the month meeting, our end of the month meeting is to do tables. Okay. Now, I would like to know why our ambulance is in a different county. Because they were out of ambulances, and we worked together with area counties. They would do the same for us if we needed one. Is there an agreement? Is there? A county agreement that's signed? No. So who gives permission to loan out county vehicles, county owned vehicles? Well, he called me and asked me what I thought of it because they were flat out out of ambulance. Who's time. he? Brett. Brett Kingen. So our department head called you and the two of you decided to loan out a county vehicle. Well, I told him that it was up to him. So it's on him. He so the department head, our our EMS director loaned out a county vehicle without board permission. I he talked to me. He called me and asked me if it would be okay, and I said if they needed it, it was I was Saturday willing morning, to help them because they would help us. Okay. In return, so so I'm, I'm I'm confused again because here we are, week number two. You were consulted by Brett King in about our ambulance and. You, as in Terry Finch, and you, Mr. Aljo Wallace, were also consulted by Brett Kingen about the same issue. So you both had correspondence with Brett Kingen over this ambulance that belongs to our county. I guess that's correct. It was Saturday morning, if I remember right, when he called me. Did he send a crew with the ambulance? Excuse me. I, I would like to finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. I. What? You also had. I, 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 Brett you had called contact. me. Brett called me and, and asked so me if it would be okay. So you both had a phone conversation with him. Yes. Was I contacted? I didn't contact. I didn't contact you. Right. And did either of you speak to one another to make sure that that was okay? No. Nope. No. And this decision was not made at the commission table. It was Saturday morning. It was they Saturday were, morning. Their ambulance, their last ambulance went down. Okay. So basically what we're admitting to here is called a serial meeting where the same person contacted two different people on the board about the same issue and a decision was made outside of the commission. Are we all under the same understanding that this is not permissible? I didn't practice? make the decision. Brett made the decision. Brett made the decision to contact you. He asked you. my opinion. Okay. And you didn't tell him that that should probably come in front of the board and not On be done. Saturday morning at whatever time it was and their ambulance, last ambulance was broke down. I wasn't going to call a special meeting or ask for a special meeting to loan an, an adjacent county an ambulance. So how do we take on liability for releasing our county vehicles to other people? How does that work? I mean, we had special permission for Barnard to use one of our highway department construction equipment pieces for a one-day ordeal. And how long has our ambulance been out of our county? This past week, as far as I know. Yeah. You, you don't see a problem with a department head contacting the two of you outside not of a meeting. Not a Saturday morning when they need an ambulance. Well, I'm thankful that you admitted to it, so I guess that's all I can say is at least you're talking about it now and not still trying to keep it. You know, I understand that you two don't, don't like my positions. I don't know if he called you. He just he admitted that he called him. But what I'm saying is I understand that you two don't like my positions on things. But matter of fact is there are three chairs at this table, whether you like it or not. 
and decisions need to come before this table. And I'm really tired of walking in here and finding out that all these things are done behind closed doors. You want to know why the public has so much backlash towards the decisions that this commission made? That is not that. the point of the conversation. We've you can make that same excuse for any situation. Excuses. You can make that same excuse for any situation, Terry. Oh yes, he punched he punched in his time clock when he wasn't really there, or he did this or that. I don't think anyone would have a problem with it. You can say that about anything. That doesn't make it okay. And the whole point of following a protocol is so that you do things right and you do it every time and you don't give special, you know, circumstances out according to who you're friends with or who you talk to on the phone. You do understand that it's illegal to have a serial meeting as you did. Mr. Chairman? Yes. You do Why? you do understand. I don't I wasn't aware I did have a meeting. I just, Brett asked me if that was okay and I said if they need an ambulance, we need to help. And that was my conversation with Brett. And did I know how long the ambulance was going to be out? No, he didn't say. He just said they needed it. So and I, I said as long as we are covered and we have an extra one, and I have no problem helping our neighbors out. So Monday, they would do it, knew it the same for us. So Monday when they couldn't get back up on a flight crew coming in. So we came over. Yeah, how long did it take them to get out? Because they're in the field. And that's no shame on them. It's harvest time. They're going to be busy. Most of them are farmers. They're going to be busy. But what you're saying is we had to call Sylvan we because call we didn't Sylvan have our other ambulance weekend. here doesn't necessarily mean we would have had a crew here. It's more likely we would have had a crew here than calling in farmers from the field. And you know, you're, you're, you're one of them. You're out in Vesper at I was time. in the field. Exactly. I would have had to go on the field and the field would have been close to St. Louis from here anyhow, by far. Did Regardless, um, this this is, this is a situation of protocol. You can make justifications all you want if it's an emergency or if it's this, that, or the other thing. This was apparently not an emergency. We didn't call one of our crews to respond to Beloit, correct? They had crews. They didn't have trucks. No, our crew no. did not accompany our ambulance no. to go to a phone call for an emergency in Beloit. We just decided to send our ambulance on a Saturday instead of waiting until Monday to get permission. They didn't have an ambulance. They had one. So it was basically broke down too. They, they still had one out of four. They also had two stations. I understand that, but... So are you okay then with me giving permission through the highway department to just loan out our bulldozer as I see fit because someone might need it over the weekend? Am I getting permission from the board to make that decision as an individual away from the commission table? I can understand that you're concerned about them calling each other or whatever I and you not being in, well, I mean, you know, the conversation between Brett and you two. I can understand you being concerned, you know, concerned about that. But on the other hand, as a member of the county, I would feel really crappy if I said, no, we're going to have a special meeting on money for this and then find out somebody had a heart attack and they couldn't get to them. That would really weigh on my conscience a great deal. So as a county, I can understand your point, but I also think that we need to help the other counties as much as we can because that way they will come and help us. And God forbid we should ever have a problem where we need extra people to come in. That, you know, you, you, you never know. You never know what you burn bridges. You never know what's going to happen down the road. You got to keep those doors open, and yeah, I don't agree. He should have called you too. But no, actually, it's completely illegal for that to have happened. Well, yes, it, but you it, can't. It, you just it, can't do it. Period. It's, it's happened. That's, okay, that's you you point. say that, but then how many emails have you sent to me that you've asked me to send out to the other board members? I have never asked you to send something. Yes, to you the have. Board. I have. Give the me emails. an example. Give me an example. The Please. the emails with that. What was that one guy's name? You wanted me to to tell each of the commissioners 
that he wanted to talk to each of them individually and you asked me to email them I the information. I specifically prefaced that with an attention to our attorney and you know that so please don't omit that. Oh no no no. Yes no. it's no. specifically said no. it was it to said, you and Jennifer O'Hare and it said with Jennifer's permission with Jennifer's permission it that still that would doesn't, happen. It still doesn't matter if you add with Jennifer's permission or not. You still asked us to do that. What is the difference? The difference is she no. was notified as our attorney that we were going to discuss that. That was attorney-client privilege based on a negotiation for a contract that someone oh, no, no, wanted no, no. to contact us. No. It was about them getting in touch with them. It, well, I never discussed details of anything. I have the email too, Dawn, and it yes. specifically was addressed to you and Jennifer O'Hare. That's right, and you yes. asked that it be distributed to the other I two asked commissioners. that he be put in touch with them no. personally. Yes. No, you asked us to please distribute pull, the email. Please pull up the I email. I will. Please pull up the email. I will, ma'am. You, you, uh, please pull up the email. Very quick to criticize. They were also having the eight man all star game that morning that the ambulance had to be at, so they had no ambulance. Uh, nobody is debating the nobility of helping out other counties. I'm, I'm going to throw that out there. I think it's an ad admirable and admirable thing to do to help out all of our counties. But having a written agreement would be smart because A, it saves us the liability. If our ambulance breaks down in Beloit, we can bring it back and, you know, whoever yeah, had it last will. I understand that. That, that is. That's what I'm saying is why don't we have this written agreement and why... We respond to calls on the interstate and Ellsworth County. We don't have a written agreement to do it. Us responding is different than us just giving our vehicle exactly. to a different county. They don't county. have a written agreement if to do it. That is completely different than we just sending the ambulance. They well, two crews it, it, it's, it's been done. It's the, my point on I'll all of this is it has been too. done. Okay, it's been done. What what was done can't be undone. No, and I'm so not all the arguing and the squabbling about it isn't helping. What needs to be done is something needs to be made aware that from now on when something happens. We need to have something in writing. We need to have something. Yes. That's the bottom line. That's, what I'm That's the bottom line. So why do we keep hashing over? Well, they took it for a week. He, he, they made a decision. They didn't have one. It's done. It's done. But if, are we covered? Like if our vehicle is up in Mitchell County and something happens, like on the way to, say, Kansas City with a major emergency and something happens, are we covered to where the ambulance couldn't make it and the patient died? Since it's our potentially, we potentially with our crew. We both have the same insurance company. What? We both have the same insurance. So company. we would we wouldn't be in for a lawsuit because Just our because vehicle county if an ambulance malfunction. breaks down, you're not going you can't be in a lawsuit with the vehicle. Okay. But or like, or like our personal control. equipment in a malfunction, we wouldn't be held liable. I found the email that Don's or Don is speaking of. I said it's to it's to our Lincoln County Attorney Jennifer and Don Harlow, and it did say forward as notice to other commissioners. Jennifer, as County Attorney, I trust you will stop this correspondence should it defy any legal issue surrounding communication of our board. If that be the case, I will simply announce this proposal publicly on 3-20-2017. Don, with Jennifer's permission, please assume the task of secretary and relay the message to the other commissioners that they are to place a phone call to the interested party below. Please be clear that the commissioners do not respond to me or you to avoid a serial communication on the issue. I have spoken with a company who is eager to submit a proposal to take on the administrative task for Lincoln Park Manor, and their request is to speak privately with each county commissioner. Jim McLaughlin was more That's than kind... He wanted to speak with you before coming to the meeting. I, I preface this to the, the county. Same thing. If we all talk to him individually, it's a serious yeah, deal. Yeah. And exactly what I said is, if that be the case, I will simply announce this proposal publicly on 3-20-27. I completely prefaced it properly so that I was, because at this time, this is two months ago. You don't think I've been learning more as time goes on? You're the ones that have been here for a decade or longer and still doing these things. They needed an ambulance that morning. They didn't need it Monday morning. I'm not, I understand that. You're, you're avoiding the issue, which is that you no. as people are giving personal permission for things. I, I asked someone 
to be able to contact you personally to come in and provide a complete proposal to the board with our attorney's approval. You personally, to just give people permission to loan out our equipment, I mean, if I had done that, what would have come down on me? I would assume they called two of us to make sure that he had a majority. That would be my, my guess. Yes, you're absolutely right. So you could have right. said no, and it wouldn't have made any difference. We could have come in here and voted on it, and two of us could have said yes, and you could have said no. But at the time, they needed an ambulance. They needed it then. They didn't need it later after we could call a meeting. The point is, I clearly prefaced to two people that I was not asking them to continue on with this correspondence if it was going to undermine what the actual legal circumstances were. I read the email aloud. And it does say to you and Jennifer, and it does clearly say that please stop this correspondence. But the point being is, is you still asked for it to occur, correct? I asked for you to put them in touch with him. He wanted to come before the board after speaking to the board. Anyone is allowed to come to us. This isn't, this isn't a county employee making a decision that one of us is permitting behind closed doors. This was me asking for someone to be able to contact them. I do not have their contact information except for their emails, which I have never emailed them. And I have it only because I receive group emails where their emails are involved. I did not do what you're trying to assimilate that situation in this situation. It's not the same thing. I didn't give permission to anyone to do anything without the board, ever. You're sadly mistaken. But that's your opinion and I have my Where opinion. did I give permission to, for someone to do something? Um, you were asking specifically for, uh, for me to do this. For you to do what? To contact the other two commissioners, to forward this email and that gentleman's information to the other two commissioners. So whether, whether you think it is or you don't, in my, in my opinion, in my personal belief, it's one and the same. But you didn't do it, correct? No, I did. I forwarded it to them. So then you did get permission from our attorney? No, I did so, not. And what, did the fir what is the first thing I said about Jennifer? Well, you know what? Whether you have that there or not, you asked that it be forwarded to the commissioners and I forwarded it to the commissioners. Is there anything else? So get come smug all you board. want. I don't care. No good germ. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. I can nay. stare you down too. Don, we'll you're being extremely abrasive. No, you're you know what? You abrasive. have been too. You have been incredibly disrespectful to me since you got in here day one. Disrespectful? I don't understand. I don't understand that.